Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of the early Vedic period. Get ready for an intriguing journey through ancient history, filled with captivating tales, rituals, and beliefs. But before we begin, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell, so you never miss any of our exciting content. And if you enjoy our videos, consider supporting us by visiting the link in the description. Now, let's start unraveling the secrets of the early Vedic period. Early Vedic Period In addition to the archaeological legacy discussed before, there remains from this period the earliest literary record of Indian culture, the Vedas. Composed in archaic, or Vedic, Sanskrit, generally dated between 1500 and 800 BCE, and transmitted orally, the Vedas comprise four major texts, the Rigveda, the Samaveda, the Yajurveda, and the Atharvaveda. Of these, the Rigveda is believed to be the earliest. The texts consist of hymns, charms, spells, and ritual observations current among the Indo-European-speaking people known as Aryans, from Sanskrit Arya, noble, who presumably entered India from the Iranian regions. Theories concerning the origins of the Aryans, whose language is also called Aryan, relate to the question of what has been called the Indo-European homeland. In the 17th and 18th centuries CE, European scholars who first studied Sanskrit were struck by the similarity in its syntax and vocabulary to Greek and Latin. This resulted in the theory that there had been a common ancestry for these and other related languages, which came to be called the Indo-European group of languages. This in turn resulted in the notion that Indo-European speaking peoples had a common homeland from which they migrated to various parts of Asia and Europe. The theory stirred intense speculation, which continues to the present day, regarding the original homeland and the period or periods of the dispersal from it. The study of Vedic India is still beset by the Aryan problem, which often clouds the genuine search for historical insight into this period. That there was a migration of Indo-European speakers, possibly in waves, dating from the second millennium BCE, is clear from archaeological and epigraphic evidence in Western Asia. Mesopotamia witnessed the arrival about 1760 BCE of the Kassites, who introduced the horse and the chariot and bore Indo-European names. A treaty from about 1400 BCE between the Hittites, who had arrived in Anatolia about the beginning of the second millennium BCE, and the Mitanni Empire invoked several deities, Indara, Uruvna, Matira, and the Nasatyas, names that occur in the Rigveda as Indra, Varana, Mitra, and the Ashvins. An inscription at Bhagaskoi in Anatolia of about the same date contains Indo-European technical terms pertaining to the training of horses, which suggests cultural origins in Central Asia or the Southern Russian steppes. Clay tablets dating to about 1400 BCE, written at Tel El Amarna, in Upper Egypt, in Akkadian cuneiform, mention names of princes that are also Indo-European. Nearer India, the Iranian plateau was subject to a similar migration. Comparison of Iranian Aryan literature with the Vedas reveals striking correspondences. Possibly a branch of the Iranian Aryans migrated to northern India and settled in the Saptas in the region, extending from the Kabul River in the north to the Sarasvati in Upper Ganges, Yamuna Dobe in the south. The Sarasvati, the sacred river at the time, is thought to have dried up during the later Vedic period. Conceived as a goddess, see Sarasvati, it was personified in later Hinduism as the inventor of spoken and written Sanskrit and the consort of Brahma, promulgator of the Vedas. It was in the Sapta Sindhu region that the majority of the hymns of the Rigveda were composed. The Rigveda is divided into ten mandalas, books, of which the tenth is believed to be somewhat later than the others. Each mandala consists of a number of hymns, and most mandalas are ascribed to priestly families. The texts include invocations to the gods, ritual hymns, battle hymns, and narrative dialogues. The ninth mandala is a collection of all the hymns dedicated to Soma, the unidentified hallucinogenic juice that was drunk on ritual occasions. Few events of political importance are related in the hymns. Perhaps the most impressive is a description of the battle of the ten chiefs or kings, when Sudas, the king of the preeminent Bharatas of southern Punjab, replaced his priest Vishvamitra with Vasishta, Vishvamitra organized a confederacy of ten tribes, including the Puru, Yadu, Turvashas, Anu, and Druhu, 
which went to war against Sudas. The Bharatas survived and continued to play an important role in historical tradition. In the Rigveda the head of a clan is called the Raja, this term commonly has been translated as king, but more recent scholarship has suggested chief as more appropriate in this early context. If such a distinction is recognized, the entire corpus of Vedic literature can be interpreted as recording the gradual evolution of the concept of kingship from earlier clan organization. Among the clans there is little distinction between Aryan and non-Aryan, but the hymns refer to a people, called the Dasyas, who are said to have had an alien language and a dark complexion and to worship strange gods. Some Dasyas were rich in cattle and lived in fortified places, Puras, that were often attacked by the god Indra. In addition to the Dasyas, there were the wealthy Panis, who were hostile and stole cattle. The early Vedic was the period of transition from nomadic pastoralism to settled village communities intermixing pastoral and agrarian economies. Cattle were initially the dominant commodity, as indicated by the use of the words gatra, kalpan, to signify the endogamous kinship group and gavishti, searching for cows, to denote war. A patriarchal extended family structure gave rise to the practice of nyoga, levirate, which permitted a widow to marry her husband's brother. A community of families constituted a grama. The term vish is generally interpreted to mean clan. Clan assemblies appear to have been frequent in the early stages. Various categories of assemblies are mentioned, such as vidatha, samadhi, and sava, although the precise distinctions between these categories are not clear. The clan also gathered for the yajna, the Vedic sacrifice conducted by the priest, whose ritual actions ensured prosperity and imbued the chief with valor. The chief was primarily a war leader with responsibility for protecting the clan, for which function he received a Bali, tribute. Punishment was exacted according to a principle resembling the Wurgild of ancient Germanic law, whereby the social rank of a wronged or slain man determined the compensation due him or his survivors. Thank you for joining us on this mesmerizing journey into the early Vedic period. If you found this video insightful and engaging, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more intriguing content. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.